Okay, welcome to uh, 203 Charlie Alpha. That's a piston uh, equipped uh, four blade Malibu Mirage, and uh, we're en route. Uh, just uh, came up from Bureau Beach on our way over Savannah, and now on our way up to Florence, and a left turn for the uh, Chesterfield 3. Arrival. Now, uh, I just switched frequencies and ATC just informed me that there's a moderate to extreme uh, precipitation at 12 o'clock. Now then, um, while I know that's true, because I can see it on the next rad here, um, I also know that we're mostly above it, and the reason I know that is because I'm painting ground on the uh, uh, radar here 40 miles out, and there's uh, nothing so far. Now, as that uh, little nub of uh, green begins to nudge in toward me there, I'll go ahead and paint up on that uh, display and then do a vertical profile on it to uh, verify the existence of rain um, at or above our altitude. I don't really expect to see any rain up here today, and the reason is is the outside air temperature is a minus 24. Uh, this, of course, doesn't preclude precipitation or rain, but it would mean that there would have to be wet clouds in front of us, which so far, so far we don't have here on the radar. So these two are mutually exclusive. And if there's no rain and the temperature is minus 24, then we do not expect to encounter any 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 rain at all. Uh, on the other hand, if there is weather here, if there is wetness at uh, at 250 at a minus 24 degrees C then we need to get around it because it's super cold liquid drops and of course the aircraft can't deal with that very effectively. Looking out the window now, I can see uh, that we're in a, a high overcast. There's uh, no uh, discernible uh, variations in the cloud, no, uh, uh, no way to see any edges of clouds. So it's just a high thin cirrus. I have opened the alternate air and uh, the reason is is that we are indeed in visible moisture and my experience with this is if you don't o open it in these conditions in any visible moisture you run the risk of uh, ingesting ice and or losing manifold pressure at, at the very least when uh, the wastegate fully closes the wing is clean um, there's no issue there I've been checking the tail the camera won't check the tail very well but uh, uh, it is it is clean for now so uh, Really, I'm using NEXRAD radar, the storm cell displays, and the echo tops on the Garmin 496. Um, and I don't really consider that completely necessary, but I have it. So I'm certainly using it. And then lastly, I'm using ATC reports uh, to help me uh, determine which way to turn. Now then, as far as the strategy, uh, coming up here from... Uh, from Florida, uh, we started the flight in an area that uh, had just uh, uh, scattered to uh, broken clouds, and uh, this frontal activity has uh, progressed as we started. Now, obviously, I checked this weather on the ground before I left, and uh, my strategy is to climb to the service ceiling of the aircraft before encountering the weather, and then using NEXRAD and radar. Uh, understand what the weather really is at all times having at least two ironclad options and at this point uh, our best option is to continue straight ahead we do have weather and uh, there's plenty of it and uh, uh, but we're mostly over top of it and uh, through it now as you can see on this display here yeah, it's bring us in a little bit. And, uh, and so, uh, over Florence, there's still moderate precipitation, but as we make the left turn to the northwest towards the uh, Char Charlotte area, then uh, uh, we'll be in light to moderate rain, perhaps, in the descent, but um, through the, the worst part of the weather. So that's the strategy. The strategy is to get high, and then if you encounter the weather, or need to encounter it, turn the aircraft so that you can paint it and make some decisions about whether you're above it or not. And the way I do that is uh, with NEXRAD and with radar. NEXRAD showing where it is on the ground, and radar showing me where it is in front of me at altitude. And there are three positions that I use on the radar. There's the parked position, which means I'm simply setting the range to 40 miles 
and then adjusting the tilt down until uh, the the radar is painting the ground on one third of the of the screen. Charlie Alpha, this is a maintain fault level two four zero. Uh, down to two four zero three, Charlie Alpha. Well, he's asked us to come down. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm not happy about that, but All right, it's four twenty four. Let's see how that goes. I'd like to stay up a little longer. Let's do a quick VNAV and see what we need here in order to get to UZA. Oh, two five zero. It's four twenty four. Uh, Commander six seventy three, showing you in moderate to extreme precipitation all the way till you get down to Charleston. Let me know if you need to deviate. We'll go, Commander six seventy three. Yeah, I suppose it's time anyway. Okay. So then, painting the ground one third the way out is the trick. Uh, now that we're in a slight descent, I'm going to paint up a little bit to decrease that. And then, of course, in the park position, anything that marches in at us is almost certainly weather. And then by um, tilting up and going to the vertical profile mode, we can ascertain the height of the weather and whether or not it's at or above our altitude. This course is a little harder to do in the descent. But um, I'm comfortable with the way the next ride is now that we're behind most of that weather and therefore uh, uh, not seriously threatened by it anymore. Um, just barely, but I'm comfortable with that. So we'll see how it goes. So the three positions for real-time radar, the park position, which paints the ground one-third the way out and allows us to see weather marching in. Uh, then there's the vertical profile, which is here. And now then there's a little airplane uh, over here on the side. And uh, that cone there means, since it's symmetrical, means there is no weather there. And so um, we're happy with that. Uh, we go back to the weather mode. Uh, here. And then lastly is the threat ID position, which uh, we would just tilt the radar up until it said 5 degrees up. And the reason we do that is because uh, the antenna beam width is 10 degrees. Um, and so 5 up approximate, approximates those items uh, which are at or above our altitude. Okay, well, um, here in the descent, it's getting a little busy now, so we're, uh, it's back to the flight for me. Thanks for joining me. This is Dick Launchford, and uh, enjoy your day. Fly safely. Train off.